hear you. Hey, there we go. Hello. Thanks. Hello. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time to spend some time with us this, I should say this afternoon now. So um, thanks again for joining us. And we're going to roll straight into questions so that we can maximize the time that we have with you. And to kick us off, we're going to start with Jenna Fryer. Go ahead, Jenna. Thanks. I got the poll today. Hi, Brad. How you doing? Good. Good. The poll. Look at you go. A lot of pressure. <laughs> A lot of pressure. Uh, not, not, not new territory that I'm going to cover here with you. You have two races left with Team Penske, and I'm wondering how you're feeling about that, um, and and any sort of reflections maybe you've you've had. Yeah, I think there was probably a lot of reflecting over the last half a dozen weeks, but now with the task at hand to um, you know try to win the championship, there's not a lot of time to reflect. There, there's too much coming at me in the, through the front windshield to be looking out the, the rearview mirror. But, uh, you know, I, I head down on trying to win this weekend at Martinsville, and then hopefully if we're able to achieve that uh, and or just transfer into the next round, um, then do the same in Phoenix. So that's consumed the majority of my bandwidth, to be quite honest, and I really haven't had a chance to reflect. Um, with that being said, I'm wondering, as you head into, you've been a team owner before, um, now you're stepping up in, into a much larger uh, role. What do you think you've learned from Roger that, that you can apply? Oh, I mean, a lot. It's hard to uh, say it in one setting uh, and give it the, the due justice it probably deserves, but I'll give it my best shot for you, Jenna. Um, you know, I think Roger has always had a level of professionalism that um, is somewhat contagious, inspiring. Uh, you know, attention to detail is incredible. Uh, you know, clearly he's got a great business acumen uh, to be where he's at and done the things he's done. And, you know, I, I think even more so than all that, he is uh, really, in my mind, known for his just contagious work ethic. Um, you know, you, you're not, not going to outwork Roger Penske, and uh, I respect that so much about him. Will you be that kind of owner? I certainly hope. Um, you know, I've, I've got some things that are going for me, uh, which are great. Uh, you know, having competed at, at this level now for just over 10 years and, you know, pretty good understanding of the, the players and the landscape, et cetera. Um, my goal is to take everything I've learned from him and uh, be stronger accordingly and, and apply it with my own personal experiences and put together a great team, a great company that can endure and win championships for uh, years and decades to come. Thanks, Brad. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, Jenna. All right. Our next question will come from Bob Puckers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Brad, along those lines, would there be any sen more sense of accomplishment or pride in making the championship four in your last year at Penske? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I have allowed my head to go into that space a couple times, Bob. It's a dangerous spot to get in because uh, it, it distracts from the focus of, um, you know, putting it all together. So I, I kind of try to shut my brain off of that as soon as it goes in that spot. But uh Clearly, it would mean the world to me to uh, to be able to do that for him and, and do it for our team um, in the last uh, year together. Well, but what about for you? Like, I mean, I, I assume with the new car, maybe there's less angst of like what you know about what's going on with the cars and what and what the team is doing. But I mean, is there any? I mean, have you felt any bit of a disconnect of like, well, that you're viewed as a guy with a foot out the door and and that you know and all the things that kind of go along with knowing that you're not going to be back there, you know, in, in two weeks. Yeah. You know, that, that feeling hasn't been one that I've really settled into um, or allowed myself to settle into. I think this is a, as natural a transition as there is with the new car coming in uh, because it's such a technology shift, a resource shift that there really was no reason to hold anything back this year. So I haven't felt that much of a change, uh, at least from my end. Thank you. No problem, Bob. Okay, our next question is going to come from Mike Henry. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, 
Mike, can you hear us? All right, we'll go to Woody and then hopefully we can come back to Mike. Go ahead, Woody. Hey Brad, appreciate your time. Um, no matter what happens this weekend, you'll race at Phoenix. So I'm curious as to, I mean, you finished fourth and second there the last two times. How much do things change over the course of a year since it was so early in the season when you go there and so late when you finish there? Uh, and, and what can you apply from that to the next weekend, the next race there? Yeah, normally, Woody, I would say it changes a lot. But, you know, with the development freeze and all those things, I don't think it changes that much. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot that will apply uh, between the spring race and the fall race. And I expect the two races to be very similar to each other. So um, not expecting a big difference and certainly going to apply all the, the notes and thoughts we have from the spring. Thank you. No problem. Okay, we'll go back to Mike Cambry. Mike, can you hear us? All right, we'll continue with questions. Now we will go to Michael Shelton. Go ahead, Michael. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Brad, uh, your last race at Martinsville back in April was your first ever DNF at the track. And with the exception of that, this is a track that you've won at twice and you, that you performed consistently at with an average finish of 11th. Uh, I know that's not an indicator of what's to come, but you know, how much confidence do you have heading into this weekend at Martinsville with the track record that you have at that facility? Yeah, Martinsville. So I made my first ever NASCAR start there in the truck series. Didn't go very well. And I learned so much from it. And it's been a great track for me ever since then. Uh, had some tough breaks, you know, one year we blew a tire and, uh, and this past year we lost power steering and had a mechanical failure and then got caught up in a wreck because I didn't have any steering. <laughs> so that was uh, not a good run. But outside of that, you know, I feel like we've ran 15, maybe 20 races there that have gone really, really well. It's been a great track for us. Um, I, I always get excited about going there. The Team Penske group has worked very hard to bring great cars for that track over the last half a dozen years. And I think it showed. Uh, we've, we've put up some great numbers. So um, I'm excited about it and feel like we have a great opportunity. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. No problem, Mike. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Our next question is going to come from Chris Knight. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Brad. Thanks for your time. Um, I was just curious about Chris, you know, your relationship with Chris Buescher and if you guys have a pretty good relationship and how much you're looking forward to working with him in 2022. Well, you know, Chris and I haven't had a chance really to work together yet. Uh, clearly, that's coming soon. Uh, my overall impression is he's one of the most underrated drivers in the garage. Um, it was only about a week after I signed my deal where the question came up about Chris and where the company should go. And uh, my immediate reaction was sign him right away. I think given the right equipment, he can win races and contend for a championship. Um, so I'm excited about having him as a, a teammate. Um, you know, he's put up some, some really strong races in situations where the, you know, the effort elsewise was probably not in a position to, you know, deliver those results. Uh, and, um, I think that given the right supporting cast, he can, uh, really move the needle. So I'm excited about him, um, you know, I look forward to working with him. He's, I'll never forget the first time I actually got to see him um, in a fair evaluation. We actually had a Ford event a number of years ago, probably four or five years ago, he was at where we were driving Mustangs uh, at this road course in South Carolina. And he was hands down the fastest guy there. And uh, I was blown away. I, I had, you know, quite honestly, not given him the respect he deserved until then. And um, so, I feel really good about him. Thanks for your time. Good luck at Martinsville this weekend. Appreciate it. Okay, we're going to try to fit in just a few additional questions. And next, we'll go to Rob. Go ahead, Rob. Thanks, Amanda. Hey there, Brad. Good to talk to you again. Howdy, Rob. I know you're, hey there. I know you've been focused on trying to get to the championship four, but kind of to kind of uh, carry off the other questions, you've had quite the evolution as a, a cup driver, but how do you view it in terms of your journey from being this upstart to this 
respected legend. Well, I, I don't really view it that much. I just try to do my own thing and try to do the best I can. I try not to uh, allow myself to get caught up in press clippings for good or bad and, and all those things. So I'm, I'm trying to do uh, the things I need to do to feel good about myself and uh, the stats being what they are at the end of the day. Um, you know, that said, it, it, it is easy to get caught up in those things. Every once in a while, someone will read a stat to me that makes me feel really good uh, and blows my head up. And then it doesn't take long for somebody to read one back to me that makes me feel like absolute crap. So um, I've learned a long time ago to, you know, don't let those things uh, get into your psyche. And so uh, that's, that's what I try to do. But uh, I'm really proud of the career I've had nowhere near ready to be done and have a lot left to do um, and, and look forward to these two weeks, hopefully uh, leaving some great marks on board. Thank you, Brad. Best of luck. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Our next question is going to go to Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you. Hey, Brad, two for you. The first kind of piggybacking off of what Bob and Jen are asking about just making the final four and being with team Henske. Would there be any satisfaction if you made the final four, considering some people I feel like have overlooked this team and have kind of labeled this a lame duck season for you guys? Absolutely. I think it would be a huge testament to the team, not just myself, but the entire team uh, to our resolve and overall, you know, mental toughness. So certainly a point of pride if we were able to pull that off. We've got a great opportunity. Uh, you know, we're six points back. Um, we have control of our destiny if we win the race. Even if we don't win the race, realistically, if we, uh, you know, put up a lot of stage points and do all those things, um, we've got a great shot. So I, I feel pretty good about this weekend. Along those same lines, talking about six points below the cut line, how much will that affect how you race this weekend? Maybe in terms of your aggression level, maybe the strategy that Jeremy's going to call. What does being six points below, because theoretically you can point your way in, but you talked about trying to win the race. So how does six points uh, affect your, your mentality this weekend? Yeah, I think for me, it doesn't affect my mentality. If you compare it to last year, uh, we had a great race at Martinsville. We scored stage points, a lot of stage points, ended the race, I think, fourth or fifth. Um, and, um, you know, under that scenario, I don't know how many points we scored, but it was probably upper 40s. Uh, that would probably be enough for this weekend. So uh, if we can just repeat that, we'd be in a good spot. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right. Well, Brad, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, I know we didn't get to all the questions, but um, we appreciate you spending some time with us this afternoon, and we wish you the best of luck this weekend in Martinsville. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, everybody. Y'all have a great day.